Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Art Alien TV. Now today, I'm going to very quickly show you this. Now, some of you may have seen something similar to this before on either my channel or other people's channels about plants on Mars. But this is the first time I've shown it properly because I've just done this gigapan of this. I'm just going to zoom out of this. It's very blue. A lot of the sand in Gale Crater is actually a sort of um, grey-blue colour. And this is a good example of it. And we've got all these kind of weird rocks around here, some of which looks a bit like petrified wood, like this material here, okay? But just above it, we have this small plant, or possible plant, I should say. Now, I'm pretty sure this is a plant, and in fact, I think it's a type of desert succulent, a bit like a small cactus, okay? Now, why do I think that? Well... It just so happens that many years ago, back in 2014, I found this thing. All right? This is rule, this clip here. 2014. We have a little stump, like a trunk, with leaves sticking out of it. Weird sort of branches and leaves sticking out. All right? Here's an enhanced clip here. Now look at the shape of this leaf here. Three fingers to it. This one has fingers as well. And uh, you can see parts sticking up above it. And something sticking out here as well. Right? Almost identical, I would say. In shape and colour. To this. This possible leaf here is about the same size as that one I just showed you. In fact, it's almost identical in size. This is literally only a couple of inches tall, right? Maybe a few, but no more than that. And when you zoom out, you can see the rover is looking down at the ground at these things here, and it's just a bit further back. Now what I've done on this one, I've got a bunch of versions of the same image here. Some more recent, like this one. And I've even got original clips that I did nine years ago, like this one, just being brightened up. Now, the problem is with this, this is further away from the rover. It's about the same size, but it's further away, so the image is quite distorted and choppy where I've enlarged it. But um, you can see what it is. We've got a little kind of trunk, and we've got leaves. And when you enhance the image and colour correct it, it goes very green, okay? And we have a very similar looking thing here. And what I've done on this gigapan is I've added a bunch of examples up here. Here's my original clip meme, which I did in 2017. So that's six years ago, right? 2017, that one. That's the recent clip I've just done, which is bluer. But actually, the sand is actually blue, okay? It's not brown in this particular area. And here, I've got that cactus, desert succulent. I found all the way back in 2014 there. Right? There he is. So look at that leaf there. And then look at this. Almost identical, I would say. It's not the other way, but it's very, very similar. I've also added a clip here of one of the videos I did a few years ago, about two or three years ago, giant vine plants on Mars. One of my favourites. Now, these are absolutely huge. This branch here, going up diagonally, is about 20 feet wide. This bit. Absolutely huge, right? So this is like a massive tree or root structure going into the ground in just on the edge northern northwestern edge of Jezero crater where the new rover is and the new rover is heading towards this area right and if it gets there we're going to see some crazy stuff and i'm really hoping it does but it may take a year or two to reach that area because it's a bit way off from where it is now Miles away, I would say. 
Okay, so that could be very interesting indeed if it gets there. Okay, so there's links to all these things, by the way. You can link to these uh, videos by clicking on these links. Right, so this is like a, a key page, really. This is an anomaly map key page. In other words, I'm giving you multiple examples of similar things that are being found on the surface by me and other people. Mostly my finds, these. There was also this plant that was, was about a year or two ago. Uh, 2022, actually, yeah, about a year ago. And uh, this is fossilised. This is tiny. It's about an inch or less. Might be half an inch in size. Most people should have seen that by now. It did the rounds really well last year. There's also this one I showed uh, from three years ago, 2020. I've done a couple of videos on this. This, I think, is also a cactus, but it's a different type. And you can see here, if you look carefully, it's like a, an asparagus. And down here, you've got roots coming out below it. And you even have a patch of wet sand here. I'll show you the enhanced clip here, it's a bit easier. There's the actual cactus. Now you can see why I called it asparagus cactus, because that's what it kind of looks like. But it is similar to some cacti we have on Earth, which are this kind of narrow formation here with little knobbly bits on, okay? With a little point on the end, right? So it's like a finger. And then down below, we can see the roots sticking out here. It goes through the ground, down to here, into this wet patch of sand. Right? So this is a living plant. Okay? This proves that plants can live on Mars because we have one here. And there are other examples. And then we have the giant veg. I've made a whole bunch of videos about these. These are absolutely astonishing in scale. They're hundreds of meters across. And they're so large, in fact, some of these are the size almost of football stadiums. This one here is the size of a football stadium, okay? And they've got vines coming out, as you can see here, that go into the ground. And we've got different stages of them here. One, two, three, and four. Juvenile, adolescent, adult, and breeding, or just about to breed, pair there. They tend to pair when they get to a certain age or size and they split into two and then you get a birthing kind of um, tube coming out of them with a bit like runner beans along the ground, like pea pods. And then the pea pods disintegrate, leaving the, the smaller ones behind and you get rows of them. So I highly recommend that. And incidentally, for, you, they're so large, they can clearly be seen from um, space like these are. And there's an example of them from a distance here. You get them in rows and they're highly reflective, bright objects. They're so large, in fact, you could fit hundreds of people inside one of these, if not a, a thousand or two or more. This one here is about 140 meters across. Absolutely insane, All right? So we have small plants, we have living plants, we have giant, possible giant veg or gourds or, or type of fungi plants, or whatever they are, these things. We've got the asparagus cactus. We have the Mars coral plant, which is actually a fossil. NASA would not admit that that's an actual real plant that's fossilized. They just said it was concretion, but they know, okay? Then we have these giant vine-like branches which have these weird parasitic vines growing over them as well. Like this here. Okay, look at this. These go up and over and around these branches. That's of course these dunes, by the way. I see dunes. Then we have this one, which I found, the first plant I found, actually, nine years ago on Mars. And then this one, 
which I found six years ago, but never really have shown because I've completely left it in my archive. My archive is so large, it takes me about a week just to go through it one end to the other. Okay, just to go through each folder. And this is a, another fine example and very similar, I would say, to this one here from 2014, okay? Check out this GigaPan, there'll be a link to this. And from this, you can link to all these different things. Or if you want to just look at the videos, you can click on this link here at the top. And this will take you to my playlist, Mars, Trees and Plants Organics, okay? There's about 40 videos I've done on these so far. I've shown multiple examples on the ground and from space. Some of them are huge, some of them are tiny, but there does seem to be plant life on Mars and NASA are not saying anything. As usual, they keep their mouths shut, they've been gagged, it must be very frustrating for them, but I do wonder whether they're ever going to tell us anything about these things. And if they do, it will probably be many years from now, okay? What must it be like working for an, an organisation that are so disingenuous and dishonest that have been lying to us for decades and decades? Okay, They've censored their own scientists that have, that have come out and said that the methane on Mars that they found when they landed in 1977, they, they lied about that. Some scientists came out and said that was signs of life on the surface. And I do think that these giant gourds and other similar, very large plants at certain times of year, when they rot down, they give off methane, okay? And that's why we have the methane spikes on Mars every year. But NASA will not admit it. What is wrong with these people? Are they run by the letter agencies? They probably are. Just like the, the media and the governments around the world that lie to us at every freaking opportunity, every time there's anything interesting, they try and fob it off. They hand out memos to all the press saying that they, they must have a memo at the bottom of each article saying this is because of pareidolia. This is not pareidolia, okay? These are plants. This is a plant. You can see it drinking, okay? What part of this do NASA not under fricking stand? What's wrong with these people? And if you're from NASA, because I know some of you are, get your fricking ass in gear and start admitting some of this stuff. We're fed up with you lot lying to us, okay? It's bad enough being lied to by governments, doctors, schools, TV personalities. Why are you doing it as well? Who are you working for? Are you working for us? Or are you working for one of these nefarious letter agencies that have been lying to us? They're now coming out saying that UFOs are real, but only to try and scare you. People like me have been researching UFOs since the early 70s. I've been researching Mars since the mid 70s, since I was a kid. These people do nothing but lie, obfuscate, and misdirect. And when they do make an announcement, it's usually to misdirect you into some other BS, down some other weird, fabricated rabbit hole that they've constructed for you to throw you off the scent, okay? So if you're from NASA, get your ass in gear and get on with it. People like me have been doing this for many years. There are thousands of people like me around the world doing this stuff and you people, all you do is fob it off and ignore it. You get it in the press and you say it's just pareidolia. All the press have been told to say that. Since the first articles I had printed in the press in 2015, 14 and 15, they've done nothing but lie. Just like they used to do with UFOs. Right? Nothing but lies and misdirection disinformation okay that's enough that was my rant over these people make me sick literally 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry about that. I, I just get very frustrated that these people... I've been showing this stuff for 10 years. I've had multi, I've had dozens and dozens of these things in the press. But they always put paradolia at the bottom. We'll call you a conspiracy theorist just for doing proper research. Okay. Well, if doing proper research makes me a conspiracy theorist, then a conspiracy theorist I freaking am. Okay? And most of our conspiracies in the last few years have all come true. So get your act together. Thanks for watching. See you soon.